people of Ukraine remain unbroken, unbroken. U.S. President Joe Biden on Wednesday ended this week's NATO summit in Lithuania with a vow of unwavering support for Ukraine and a promise of the military alliance's unity in the face of Russian President Vladimir Putin's aggression. When Putin and his craven lust for land and power unleashed his brutal war on Ukraine, he was betting NATO would break apart. We will not waver. We will not waver. I mean that. Our commitment to Ukraine will not weaken. We will stand for liberty and freedom today, tomorrow, and for as long as it takes. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky joined leaders of the world's most powerful military bloc. Ahead of meetings Wednesday, he'd argued emphatically his nation needed membership in the alliance. For that, though, he will have to wait. NATO members, including the United States, said that Ukraine could not join NATO in the midst of a war, but that it could win membership once the fighting was resolved. I look forward to the day when we're having the meeting and celebrating your official, official membership in NATO. Thank you so much for this help. At a meeting of the two leaders, Zelensky thanked the U.S. and its citizens. You spend this money for our lives, and uh, I think that we save the, the lives for, 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 for Europe and for, for all the world. At a press conference, Zelensky called the summit positive, saying it was unambiguous that Ukraine will one day be in NATO. And he's leaving with more than pledges. Zelensky thanked German Chancellor Olaf Scholz for supplying additional launchers and missiles for the Patriot air defense system. The arms cannot come too soon. These Ukrainian soldiers told a Reuters camera that they were in dire need of ammunition to sustain a counteroffensive against Russian forces occupying swaths of the country's east. Ukraine's state border service on Wednesday released aerial footage of what it said was a Russian tank rolling onto a damaged bridge near the city of Kherson. The video shows the tank hit by an explosion. It then attempts to retreat before running off the road. Its crew then abandons the vehicle. But Moscow on Wednesday staged its own demonstration of resolve. The Russian Navy held a launch ceremony for a new missile cruiser for its Black Sea Fleet, based in Russian-occupied Crimea. The vessel is reportedly capable of launching eight cruise missiles at once. Ukraine has repeatedly accused Russia of targeting civilians and infrastructure with long-range missile strikes. Russia's foreign ministry said on Wednesday the NATO summit showed the Western alliance turning to what it called Cold War schemes and pledged that Moscow would, quote, continue to strengthen the country's military organization and defense system. North Korea conducted a missile test with its longest ever flight time on Wednesday. The missile flew for 74 minutes and just over 600 miles before falling into the sea, around 150 miles west of Japan's Hokkaido. That's according to Japan's chief cabinet secretary Hirokazu Matsuno, who strongly condemned the launch. North Korea's series of actions, including its repeated ballistic missile launches, threaten the peace and security of Japan's region and the international community and are absolutely unacceptable. Moreover, such ballistic missile launches violate relevant United Nations Security Council resolutions and are a serious security issue for our citizens. We've lodged a strong protest against North Korea through our embassy in Beijing. Hirokazu said Japan believes the rocket was an Intercontinental Ballistic Missile, or ICBM. The North test-fired its first-ever solid-fuel ICBM in April. Analysts believe they can fly far enough to strike targets anywhere in the United States, and that the country has likely developed nuclear warheads that can fit on rockets. The launch follows heated complaints by the North in recent days, including accusing American spy planes of violating its airspace and comes ahead of an expected Wednesday meeting between leaders of South Korea and Japan at a NATO summit to discuss threats, including the nuclear-armed North. Iowa's Republican-controlled legislature passed a bill banning most abortions after six weeks of pregnancy, before most women even know they are pregnant. State senators passed the bill late Tuesday night in a 32-17 to 17 vote, mostly along party lines. 
The ban is expected to be quickly signed into law by Iowa's Republican Governor Kim Reynolds, who called the special session after the state Supreme Court last month blocked a similar measure passed in 2018 from going into effect. The bill will outlaw abortions with limited exceptions after cardiac activity can be detected, weeks before the fetus has developed an actual heart. It makes no exceptions for the mental health condition of the mother, nor their age. One Democratic lawmaker fought to grant exceptions for pregnant children aged 12 or under, declaring it was child abuse not to do so. Republicans rejected that amendment. The bill does not hold a woman criminally liable for having the procedure, and abortions after six weeks are allowed in the case of rape, incest, or a fetal abnormality which a doctor deems severe. Iowa will be among 15 states which have banned most abortions, since the U.S. Supreme Court in June 2022 overturned Roe v. Wade and stripped away a nationwide right to the procedure. Estamos viendo una galería que fue originalmente de edificios de Chavín muy temprano, modificados para Chavín todavía temprano, utilizados hasta Chavín medio y después, por razones de inestabilidad en este espacio, lo cerraron terminalmente. Entonces tenemos aquí congelado en tiempo. <música>